The 2023 Spanish Grand Prix is coming, went, and I'm here to give you my race quick hits. All right, my biggest winners and losers of the Spanish Grand Prix race weekend, as well as go over the predictions that I made before the Grand Prix this week. We're gonna have it all for you here. Let's go ahead, let's jump on into it. We're gonna start off with my race quick hit. So we're gonna start off obviously with the biggest change to the Spanish Grand Prix from last year to this year is the new layout, the removal of the final chicane in sector three. I think a lot of us were looking forward to it the most when the news came out and I think it actually did provide a lot of entertainment with um, you know some increased tire wear around those final couple of corners. I mean, you're taking it from a chicane that basically became single file to a om almost a very hot talk, uh, talking point over the weekend was, can you take those final couple of corners flat? It turns out, no, you can't. But that does, in, that does increase the amount of tire wear around that final sector down towards the main straight. And so I think it definitely played a factor in the fact that, you know, in the first half of the race, we saw multiple teams pitting multiple times in the first half of the race. I mean, this was not going to be a one stop from the jump. And I think that offered a lot of, uh, in the way, in terms of entertainment i mean we saw a lot of varying strategy teams opting to start on the soft some starting on the mediums um charles started from the pit lane on hards and then we saw after the first round of pit stops 10 or so ish laps in that the strategies were not going to all be the same some went to more soft some went to medium some went to hards it was going to be a wild race and it was all going to be about who got it right and who got it wrong but if we start from the results of the race itself, we saw you know a max grand slam, you know, takes pole, leads every lap, wins the race, fastest lap, the whole nine yards. Is anyone too surprised? I mean, Max Verstappen seemed to be on a different level around Spain with that RB19. They did bring some upgrades, and so I think we were all not too surprised when we saw Max just cruise out to an easy win. As you know, unfortunate as that is, I think this race still very much delivered because it was actually a huge day for Mercedes. Uh, the Zero Pods officially dead as of time of death, June 4th. 2023 a double podium for mercedes after a bringing upgrades to monaco where we couldn't really get a measure of what the results were really going to look like what the new performance boost was going to look like could it get worse could it get better no one really knew and then even in first practices and free practices one through three i mean they were really kind of all over the place in terms of setup and speed and pace but you know what when it came down to it a double podium for mercedes hard to argue with that when it comes to uh when it comes to results of the new uh, the new side pods. Next point, where is Ferrari? Carlos Sainz qualifies P2. Was this just a race pace issue? Was it a strategy issue? It's hard to say it was a strategy issue. I mean, Carlos seemed to be on a very similar strategy to everyone else. Um, but at the same time, the race pace just was not in the Ferrari today. Charles obviously starting from the pit lane, making it up to P11 was a, an impressive drive, but I think we were all expecting a little more out of that Ferrari today. And you know what? The race pace was showing. I mean, they, they had a car on the front row and just could not keep the pace and ends up finishing, what was it, P5? So Carlos gets some points. Charles, unfortunately, just out of the points, but the Ferrari is slowly fading back into obscurity. Um, after last year where they challenged at least for a little bit in the constructors and in the drivers so it's really unfortunate speaking of unfortunate let's talk about fernando alonso i think i along with many others were really excited to see fernando coming into spain his home race with an aston martin that is all of a sudden surprisingly competitive and we were excited to see what he could do and it really just turned out to be a bit of a disappointment all weekend long he ends up picking up some floor damage in uh, qualifying so which kind of put him down the order to start but i think some of us were expecting him to kind of pick his way through the field at least a little bit but it just never seemed to click for him this weekend and unfortunately he ends up getting beaten by Lance Stroll in qualifying and ends up getting beaten by Lance Stroll in the race as well. Although he did some self-implied uh, team orders down the stretch where he kind of just uh, relegated himself to just kind of sitting behind Stroll and just kind of taking it one for the team and securing decent results. But what a disappointing weekend for Fernando Alonso at his home race. And then last couple of points I'll make here. And the, the only thing I'll say is, oh, no, Lando. Lando Norris taking damage in turn two of lap one after qualifying P3 for the grid on Sunday. 
uh, a bit of a slow take into the turn two after a long run down to turn one and he ends up just getting a little caught out in the traffic ends up taking front wing damage has to pit at the end of lap one and that was pretty much all she wrote he ended up well down the order after i think even his quotes during the media after qualifying yesterday was just about how he's just trying to hang on for basically dear life and it was kind of all to all for not not but two turns into the spanish grand prix so oh no lando that's a bit tough one feel for the feel for him he had a huge qualifying just kind of all undone in two corners and that was kind of his day and then also it wouldn't be me obviously if we didn't mention nico hulkenberg well, you know, ends up starting P7 after Pierre Gasly's penalty, and just the race pace in the Haas is just not there. It's unfortunate, it really is, but at the end of the day, the Haas race pace is just not there. Nico ends up dropping more than double positions, finishing in P15 after what could have looked like a decent day at the races, but the race pace and the tire deck and whatever's going on in that Haas car is just not there right now. And I'm hoping, praying that they turn it around, but as of right now, what another just tough day for Nico Hulkenberg. And then overall, if I was gonna give a rating for Spain out of 10, I'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10. It was actually a very entertaining race. It did kind of settle into a bit of a tire management simulator down the stretch. We got a little bit of excitement near the top with Checo charging through the field on a fresh or a fresher set of soft tires, trying to chase down George Russell for P3 on the podium. But at the end of the day, I think it was very exciting. The first half of the race had a lot going on. It took a lot to kind of keep track of who had pitted, who had pitted twice, what tire everyone was on, how everyone was doing on their tires, who was gonna pit first, who was gonna undercut who. And then before it just kind of settled in and then it became what it became. But I very much enjoyed Spain. Um, it's my first time catching Spain live as a fan. And so I think it lived up to everything that I wanted it to be. Although a little bit disappointed for Nico and Haas, but at the same time, a very entertaining race. Double Mercedes podium, Ferrari kind of all over the place. Qualifying was inter entertaining. 7.5 out of 10, that's my rating for Spain. I'm gonna do a new segment for this race reaction. I'm gonna do my biggest winner and biggest loser of Spain. I'm not limiting it to individual drivers, but on, but for this weekend, we are gonna be picking two drivers for our biggest winner and our biggest loser. For the biggest winner of Spain, it has to be George Russell, right? I mean, he starts P12 after a tough qualifying on a Saturday and ends up on the podium. I mean, in a Mercedes that did not seem capable of doing things like this not but a few rounds ago. Uh, George Russell, my biggest winner of Spain, big points for him. He was getting chased down by Sergio down the stretch, but you know, he did just enough to stay on the podium. And so George Russell, you are my biggest winner of Spain. And then on the flip side of that coin, obviously the biggest loser. I don't think this is gonna go as too much of a surprise and it wasn't even really his fault. Lando Norris, I mean, a P3 qualifying in that McLaren has mega on Saturday. But unfortunately, like I said, damage on lap one, turn two, just really doomed him from the beginning. If I, and So it's, it's hard to uh, give him biggest loser when it comes to you know, something that was completely out of his control, but at the same time, he was definitely the biggest loser as he, you know, had a chance at really good points at the pace that that McLaren was putting up. And unfortunately, it all unraveled on two laps, not even two laps, two corners into the race, and his weekend was undone just like that. But that's my biggest winner and biggest loser. We now move on to Canada in two weeks. I'm looking forward to seeing Montreal featured once again, always a bit of a wild one when it comes to potential weather so be on the lookout for that let's go ahead we'll jump now into my prediction results we'll go over how i did with my predictions we made before the weekend began if you remember back to my monaco predictions i ended up going 0 for 11 when it came to my total predictions around monaco and i was determined to bounce back stronger than ever coming around spain and so i made some relatively safe predictions this time i kind of got a little out of hand when it comes to making wild predictions hoping for these crazy results but ultimately end up getting obviously less points because the expected does happen at the end of the day so this week we are going to go through our predictions and i can tell you already that i did get at least one point you'll see why but we'll start now with my biggest positive surprise and i said that the new final corner the non-chicane version would make spain way more exciting and ding ding i'm giving myself a point on that one i think it definitely added a new wrinkle into spain that non-chicane that non-single file no after you sir final corner i think it did provide a lot of new exciting action in the first half of the race we saw many one and two stops due to the tire degradation over the 
first, you know, that first stint of pretty much everybody. And I think that last sector really had a lot to do with it. It demands a lot of the tires. And I think that definitely caused a little bit more excitement when it came into strategy calls and tire choices and pit stops. I mean, we saw plenty of people pitting two, three, four times over the course of the race. And typically when it's anything but that normal one stop that we seem to only be seeing so far this season, I'm giving myself a point 100%. Moving on to my prediction for biggest disappointment. I said that the Red Bull upgrades would make them even faster. Um, so I'm giving myself a half point here because while it did seem that Max was nigh untouchable all weekend long, Checo obviously became very mortal at the same time. And so 50% correct, I'm definitely giving myself a half point here. Max was untouchable pretty much all weekend long. And outside of potential damage on lap one, um, it, we really felt like it was just gonna be a, a max walk away victory and it ended up being exactly that. Um, the only reason it wasn't any more than the ended, what ended up being a 24 second gap to uh, Lewis Hamilton in second place, I mean, it could have been even more and it was at one point almost 40 seconds. So I think I'm giving myself a half point, 100%. Looking at my qualifying predictions, I got one out of three correct. Guess which one it was. I predicted Max Verstappen to take pole. I then also predicted Fernando Alonso P2 and a Sergio Perez P3. Obviously that did not happen as the latter two had very tough days in qualifying. Checo obviously being knocked out in Q2 and Fernando taking floor damage and being unable to really put in probably a time that he thought he probably could have with that damage. So it's really unfortunate, but one out of three in qualifying ain't bad and it's better than nothing. And then for my race results, I, I was tempted to give myself a half point here, but I have not done that at any point this season so far. But I did correctly predict Max Verstappen to take the win in Spain. So that is my one out of three. I also predicted a Fernando Alonso P2 and a Lewis Hamilton P3. And while Lewis did end up on the podium, he ended up finishing second, not third. George Russell taking the honor of finishing third. And so while I did get a Mercedes on the podium, it was not in the correct position. So one out of three ain't too bad when at the end of the day, but Max was kind of an easy pick and it feels a little dirty, but at the same time, I needed some points this week. So one out of three on race results it is. And my final prediction of every race weekend is obviously my Haas F1 team prediction of the race weekend. I predicted before this weekend that two cars would get into Q2 and one car would finish in the points. It was looking pretty good for that first prediction with Nico Hulkenberg very much into Q2, but Kevin Magnussen unfortunately just did not extract enough pace out of that Haas car in Q1 and was knocked out. So one out of two cars being into Q2 means a half point uh, for that first prediction. And then I also predicted one car in the points anyway. It was looking pretty good with a Nico Hulkenberg surprise Q3 appearance, a P7 start. But like I mentioned in the quick hits, the pace of that Haas in this one was just not there. So unfortunately, that's also no points for that second one. So only half point out of two for uh, for my Haas prediction of the weekend. Hopefully I'll start to rein it in and dial it in. And hopefully they can start to rein it in and dial it in and start proving me wrong going the other way. But unfortunately for me, half point out of two of my Haas predictions. So that brings us to my final points tally for my predictions this weekend. Out of 10 total points possible, I ended up getting better than zero, four points. Four points tallied around Spain. I'm still working on dialing it in. At the end of the day, I think I get a little bit too starry-eyed with some eye predictions. While I take some safe ones, like a max win and a max pole, I think the others, I still need to figure out what's going on with the current grid so far. And I think they're also still trying to figure it out as we're starting to see some wild predictions, both in qualifying as well as in the race. But 40%, I think we're gonna have to take it after getting zero in Monaco, but I'm definitely gonna come back in Canada and try and do even better. That wraps up the Spanish Grand Prix race weekend. A pretty exciting one around Spain, if I do say so myself. We're back in two weeks as they head to Canada. A nice little break will do us pretty good, I think. It's been pretty go, go, go here for the last couple of race weekends in a row. A nice break back in Canada, which should provide some, some more excitement with some potential weather, more strategy calls to come. But that will wrap it up here. Tell me how you did with your predictions down in the comments below. And if you are an F1 fan, go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. If you haven't already, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the race weekend predictions and reactions or F1 manager, F1 22 or coming F1 23 gameplay. 
to the channel. I appreciate you guys listening in. We cannot wait for Canada. That'll do it for me here. Stay safe. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.